trying to access my presentation. So can you see the presentation now? Yes. Yes, perfectly. Okay. Good. So um, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm here to manage this third session and which she's entitled very vaguely Aligning Actors and Visions which is also the title of the section, the third section that you find in the OpenCCCP uh, uh, website. So if you had a look at this, it's more or less the kind of uh, topic that we will discuss here, which is about the methodologies uh, that we developed within Tessera and shared also within the OpenCCCP uh, partnership and discussing how those kind of tools and methods can be applied into creating, um, let's say, into the in, in working into transforming such open educational resources in uh, open educational practices, how to put in practice in the context. Uh, accordingly, I'll try to be practical. I don't want to do a, a presentation which is fully uh, uh, based on me talking. And so I'm trying to go through quite quickly through the, this presentation of methods, which includes also, uh, um, let's say, a report, a short report on how, what we did in our local lab in Berlin. Uh, to move on with proposing you a couple of exercises in applying um, such an approach into specific projects. So I have um, a preliminary question also for those that are attending this uh, um, training today. If you were also uh, all participating to the local labs into your cities. Or maybe also someone from the project uh, uh, coordinators can help me because I think it's important to understand. Uh, uh, the ones uh, from Spain, we haven't we haven't implemented yet the local labs, so oh, yeah. the Spanish ones okay. haven't participated. But you have a focus on an area. Uh, we will have a focus on an area, yeah. That's something that is already decided. Not not yet. Not yet. Okay. Good to know. Okay. Well. If this is the case, I suppose that each one of the participants has, in any case, uh, let's say, either a direct knowledge about uh, an area, a neighborhood, or a specific topic of interest, that basically, the, I will ask you just to apply uh, to your field of interest this, uh, doing an exercise in imagining uh, uh, um, the application of, of, a, of a laboratory, of, of an initiative in a local context based on your interest and using the tools that we are presenting. So let me go back to, I am still sharing the, okay. So you confirm that you still are looking at the presentation, yes? Yes, perfectly. 
Good. Okay, very quick introduction for those that don't know me. Uh, I am the co-founder of Tessere, which is an organization based in, uh, in Berlin. Uh, uh, we are engaged in urban, territorial, social and media practice. That means we are a kind of uh, hub organization that works in a hybrid field, connecting together uh, quite different uh, competencies. Uh, we work on a multidisciplinary research and education, cooperation, communication, project development and uh, management. Uh, that's why basically we have been uh, working, uh, well, this is basically our key, uh, let's say, uh, scheme to understanding uh, how do we work at the crossroads we have from the uh, top side the policy at European level which is an important field of work for us but there is also a strong connection at the bottom with the grassroots organization and activism there is let's say a background in academic research that we have been uh, working and developing but there's also uh, um, an important side in uh, developing research in artistic uh, and creative uh, fields uh, and this put together brings let's say the kind of uh, uh, framework that we are employing working on steering transformative processes the idea of basically facilitating uh, supporting promoting uh, complex process that brings to transformation Transformation, we basically, as we have a background in urbanism, in urban development, a strong focus on the spatial side, we definitely come from a, 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 an important connection with the spatial field. But the test uh, is developing a framework that somehow can be applied also from different perspectives. So uh, when we talk about a transformative process, we can imagine of developing specifically um, enterprise development, uh, or we can work on, uh, uh, let's say, supporting um, campaigns uh, for uh, um, social inclusion um, or any other process, collective process, which includes different actors and uh, applied to a specific field, not necessarily spatially bounded. The framework that we are developing is basically structured in four fields, in four variables and eight moments. The fields, essential fields are those one of places, as I told you, basically the, the, the okay, places, people, objectives and practices. These are the four fields we uh, tend to uh, understand as the main field of application of the work. Uh, places uh, is the spatial dimension, which, as I said, you it's basically the, our original uh, field of work as urbanists, basically. Um, people, that means the social dimension, which obviously it's extremely connected and developed also in uh, any kind of transformative process. The third one is the uh, strategic dimension of the objective. The fourth one is, let's say, the creative uh, uh, dimension of uh, practices. A key aspect is that obviously no one of those fields is completely disconnected from the other three, but it's essential it's extremely important somehow to understand for which is the uh, key uh, dimension from which we start a transformative process. We can think of a transformative process that engages spaces like an urban development process, urban regeneration, or something like this. We can think of uh, a, a social project about delivering services, education, uh, social inclusion. We can imagine the strategic dimension as the one that informs a plan, uh, co-designing an urban plan, 
for instance, including citizens, or the creative dimension that is maybe that one of practices that could, like can be, uh, um, for instance, uh, working on an enterprise development uh, project uh, for uh, economic uh, engagement or or the such. Then we have the five, five, four essential variables. Four essential variables are that one of language, the procedures, expectations, and time. So for language, we understand the necessity to align and to work on the different language dimension that we have. This can involve, obviously, natural language in terms of which language is spoken in a process. You can have, basically, any kind of questions that regards translation between different languages. For instance, when we uh, are engaging uh, immigrants in a project or when we are doing a project in Barcelona, when we have need to discuss which is the proper language between Catalan or uh, Castilian uh, Spanish into uh, a public meeting or basically dealing with the, all those uh, together. But we have also an aspect of language, which has a dimension of the expert language that we as experts tend to speak and to a general language that maybe citizens are able to understand and to, 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 to use in which we are confronting, we have extremely specialized languages that can be part of specifically uh, specific uh, topics uh, like uh, working with uh, environmental, nature-based uh, or sociological topics. And we need somehow so to align these languages with our target beneficiaries, groups, and partners in a project. We. The second variable is that one of procedures, which is basically all the, about creating a plan, creating an action plan, creating a, a, a strategy for developing, uh, uh, implementing a project, um, which is creating a partnership that includes different partners, different uh, um, rules, uh, and so on. We have the expectation aspect, which is also extremely important in a project. We need to uh, uh, develop uh, uh, clear um, expectation management in the projects. We need to know and to understand if I am facilitating a campaign, a political campaign against the building of, uh, uh, I don't know, a certain project. Uh, that should be clear if my, I am working on the expectations or stopping this project, which may be extremely limited uh, possibility, or I'm just hoping to develop some consciousness to create bonds uh, and uh, connection among people, to create some kind of consciousness, maybe negotiate a part, a, a, a transformation, and so on. Just to make an, a, a, um, an example of practical example of how expectation are uh, extremely essential in defining uh, uh, any kind of transformative process uh, uh, and, and in steering such process. And the fourth essential variable is that of time. As I uh, used to repeat every time this uh, uh, little uh, joke, uh, the right action at the wrong time is the wrong action. So it's extremely important to think also of the transformative process also as a, as a synchronization of actions with the right time so synchronizing time with expectations, procedures uh, in a way that basically they are delivered when they need to be and also to be plausible in terms of planning. So time is the essential variable. OK, and then we got to the uh, last part of the framework, which is uh, the eight moments. These eight moments that we identified in our framework are the reconnaissance moment, the assessment moment, the communication moment, cooperation moment, visioning, design, implementation, maintenance. Okay, back here. 
I'm not going to detail this very much. They look like in a, let's say, um, rational, clear order between reconnaissance, which is the first exploration, the first survey, just wandering in ideas and places that you don't know fully, into the maintenance, which means the reproduction of the results that you uh, uh, obtain in this action. The reality is quite different. Uh, we'll see that you can be in very different moments of, of this. The order is not absolutely so clearly defined. And uh, uh, we, we can discuss this moment also going um, uh, through this, but just to say, just to provide you a quick definition of this, uh, reconnaissance, as I said you, is just the moment of starting to feel a situation. The assessment is the rational uh, evaluation of data that you've got. Communication is the essential moment in which you can put yourself able to share data and to collaborate, which is obviously essential to create a cooperation, building partnership, be able to uh, uh, act together. Visioning is the first uh, step. That means it's allowing us, cooperating to produce some shared objectives, expectations, ideas and move into the design part which is exactly providing solutions for those uh, issues coming from the vision finally we have the implementation part which is actually developing any solution in practice and then we move into the maintenance as i said reproducing what we are we've been able to achieve uh, and taking care of its sustainability What we care about is the alignment process. That means we as an organization, we as professionals are supposed to have a position that allows basically to uh, negotiate, align, combine, make all those forces, uh, those elements working together. It is more or less the key point of what we are discussing here. Tools for aligning different visions, different actors, different issues, different languages. So that is why our scheme looks in a more, uh, let's say, conceptual way with this alignment function in the middle and you could try to imagine yourself in the middle of this scheme and then we have the four essential fields of action, spatial, social, strategic, and creative. We have the essential variables around this and the essential moments. We can also go on, I'm going to be quick in this, but basically we can imagine that uh, we really, also in terms of producing conceptual scheme for what we do, Alignment, that means that we can work with reconnaissance that helps you to align the language in a way that you can basically uh, produce visioning uh, through uh, aligning expectations. So this is the kind of uh, uh, visioning axis. You started from uh, um, aligning language of the participants until you get to, to, to produce a collective vision, uh, a collective project. On the other hand, access, you can imagine to align communication, co procedures through communication and time in order to produce an effective implementation of actions. This game can go on, also including the fields, also in working, uh, including the other aspects. But uh, I don't want to make it too, too abstract. It's so important to remember you that the, the different moments are never so clearly 
organized in this fantastic conceptual scheme that we have seen, the reality is much more messy and complicated. We can get into the process in any moment from any place, and we need to reorientate ourselves in it and work on orientating the process. That's what we are discussing about. So, uh, even if we consider this ideal scheme that goes from reconnaissance to maintenance, obviously the situation can be much different in reality. Uh, nevertheless, we are always focused, especially in Tester, we work very much into the first three moments of this uh, complex processes. We gave a big importance to the uh, necessity of producing uh, exhaustive reconnaissance and assessment phases. That means producing a solid analysis which is basically the prerequisite for any successful process. Understanding at best what is the situation, developing good analysis tools is at least half of a, a successful project. The third aspect on which we have a, a strong focus is that one of communications. Obviously, we are working and we are providing designing tools also for the other moments of the process. But definitely, when we came to, uh, for instance, designing our um, um, <clears throat> labor local laboratory in Berlin, we decided to focus on these three first three uh, steps: reconnaissance, assessment, and communication. And I'm going to detail you a little bit more. What is the kind of tools that we have been working on, developing, testing, applying, and suggesting also for the participants of the Open CCCP program? Reconnaissance is basically a little bit of the, the, the mark of uh, Tessere. It comes from the work that we did through the, uh, the artistic collective, which is pre exist uh, Tessere. Uh, the concept of reconnaissance, we took it basically, we borrowed it from the military language, which is a general inspection of exploration of an area, uh, which is needed somehow to be able to conquer it. But from our point of view, the most interesting aspect is exactly that one of uh, the uh, etymology from Latin, reconnaissere, re re recognize to know again, because the uh, main, the key concept in the reconnaissance uh, project and approach is that basically there is a knowledge of the places which is already implicit in ourselves and is made by our capacity to resonate, to be, uh, feel part of places and of contexts. So this is a methodology which has a, a big uh, um, depth to psychogeography, to all the kind of uh, uh, emotional, artistic pra practices of exploring, getting lost into, this, into, let's say, urban context, urban space. Uh, again, we apply this concept very strongly to the urban dimension because this is our background, but this is working anyway also if you think of cognitive fields less related to the spe specifically special dimension. Uh, in order to develop this methodology, we uh, developed with the Orgino Knaus Collective this uh, platform, this, uh, oops, sorry. I need to go out here and get to the link to the Urban Reconnaissance Platform. Some of you, specifically partners of OpenCCCP and people that did the lab in Berlin are probably already bored of it. 
but for the other ones, I suppose it's new. So the urban reconnaissance platform is an hypertext. It's a collection of 64 different definitions of the word city. Each one of those definitions is based on a specific key aspect of the urban dimension, starting from the most, let's say, essentially uh, foundational, liquid city, the city as a lymphatic system. There is no city without, no settlement without water. Material city, it's about the stratification or natural and artificial elements, the geology of a place. Nature is the unavoidable relation with nature. The city as a an environment, an ecological environment, inhabited city, the city as a community of people, so the cultural aspect, the, 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 the human aspect, culture as a direct product of human nature, so specifically the local culture, sacred, which is more about, yeah, metaphysical aspects of the city, religion, cults, and so on, market, the city as a site of exchange, um, public city, borders, uh, forms, uh, housing, infrastructure, landscape, and so on. The second part of the of the this uh, number of different definitions of the city is the transformative part. Formation is the first transformation is the second step. So the city as a continuously evolving city, uh, entity. Uh, so the city defined by the process rather than its fixed nature. And again, we have another block of basic exercise, 15 exercises that are more or less uh, done on this dimension. So stratification, uh, abandon and the, 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 the degradation, potential, uh, spontaneity, uh, playing the city as a pedagogic environment, production, so as a field of transformation of, of goods and energies, uh, city of flows, again, energy, the city as a consuming machine that needs to be uh, uh, fed by energies, food, the city has a food chain uh, that is needed uh, to the people, and on the other hand, waste. The city has a digestive apparatus that pr produce also scores, pr produce also uh, leftovers and uh, uh, and waste. The city has a transit, as an intersection, so transport, rhythms, events, and finally we get to the third quadrant appropriation, we called it. So the aspect, the most political aspect of city, city as a field of forces, the city as a, a place of conquest and domination, which means also the city as a set of rules, as a protocol, so the normative aspect, the city as a real estate, an inventory of properties, property city, owners, renters, the city as a commodity, as an investment sector, the city as a contradictory assemblage of different social uh, components and spaces. So, city that produce disadvantage as a discriminatory apparatus that calls for social contracts that promote the, the well-being of the citizens, which is surveyed and controlled which is partly prohibited, restricted, divided in no-go zones, the city of strangers that creates also st uh, a difference between uh, those that are part recognized and those that are considered alien, in invasive intruders, or simply a a strange, corp uh, strange bodies into the city. The city as a political construct, conflicts, uh, and, 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 and then we have uh, basically the hybridization, uh, the cultural mix-up, uh, uh, 
the concept of places also as a socially constructed geography, memory, commons, government. Finally, we got to the last final uh, quadrant of the um, uh, tools of the wheel of urban reconnaissance, which is the represent, oops. Sometimes I have a glitch, I have to go back. So yeah, represented city, the city, the representation part of the, of the uh, method, which is the one that uh, present as the city as a representation. Uh, so the city as a project, for instance, the design of the city, the city as a catalog of different collection of objects, buildings, numbers, the numbering of the city somehow. The city as a directory of names, toponymy, streets, places, squares, the city as a semantic field codified by signs of any kind, but also as a sensorial experience, as a cognitive environment that produces knowledge. This is particularly interesting for the topic of our uh, uh, training. So we are definitely discussing on how practices transform themselves in resources, open educational resources that can be used by people. So probably if we should uh, choose one definition and exercise that it's more close to the purpose of our open GGGP, uh, open curriculum, uh, uh, is definitely the city of knowledge. And then we have the city as basically a network of networks and as a database which produce uh, let's say an augmented reality of corresponding data that are connected with the physical behavior of people the city as a communication device an interface channeling information science images but also the city as an entertainment complex as basically a state of mind which is more close to the situationist approach uh, to the city as a work of art, a product of human creativity, as an utopia, a field of possibilities and visions that can be engendered starting from what exists, as a work of fact and fiction, as an, a narrative, the city as a story, that's something that we can tell, the city has also as a lexicon of words. And again, what we are looking here, this uh, urban reconnaissance uh, platform is actually a lexicon of words that are connected with the urban world. Uh, it's a collection of words, definitely. Which is the last one, obviously, the words that we use to describe the city before we can get back to the liquid to the initial. So uh, I present this because it's basically the, the, the main resource that we are been using to set up our project, to explore our themes, to develop ideas, to facilitate discussions, to explore spaces. Each one of those definitions is linked with all the other ones. That means that basically it is an hypertext because basically it finds connection between the city, for instance, as a uh, pulsating body made of rhythm and uh, what is here, for instance, energy that move this, create this rhythm. And uh, the, the, the city as a consuming machine is definitely connected with the bodies the inhabited city of people, which is at obviously connected with the culture that is proposed by human and so on. So the first way to navigate this uh, device for urban reconnaissance is just to uh, 
jumping from one definition, from one idea, from one team to another, using the natural connection of those included in these definitions. And then there is another way to uh, use it, which is moving in the other section, because each one of those exercises is, let's find one, okay, it, well, that's the same. It's connected with an exercise. So 64 exercise for exploring the city, each one according to the specific perspective, which is in, the, in this. So this is a primarily morphological description of the city as a catalog of forms, architecture, which uh, uh, produce specific pattern of forms. So this exercise suggests to observe the city from this point of view and uh, to identify all the kind of uh, dominant patterns of forms that are emerge in the in the um, fabric of the city. Each one of those exercises is composed by a, a suggestion on how to create an itinerary. So maybe moving from the periphery to the center or just uh, following some random way or just connecting key elements of the uh, city according to the specific exercise. And the second part is a list of questions. Uh, ask yourself about, look um, for this or other uh, aspect. Um, so it, there are questions that helps you to focus on this specific topic. Let's see another example. market city, the city as a site of exchange, an economic entity. So basically here you have a clear indication of how to make uh, an itinerary starting from the neighborhood marketplace, moving towards a commercial avenue, looking for the largest shopping mall in the city, and finally reach the stock market or the chamber of commerce, some kind of uh, official place that organize and along your path you can look for a certain number of things so listing uh, looking at who is owning the the commercial activities who is working in these commercial activities what type of goods are there what kind of uh, how they are connected with the uh, real estate value of uh, the, the buildings around, uh, but also listing a number of prices. Where is the uh, the cost changing from one area to another of the city? That means a set of, of instructions for exploring the city and questions in order to create a sort of diagnosis of how the city works as a marketplace, how the economy is distributed into the uh, uh, structure into into the fabric of the city you find this repeated 64 times for each one of those different uh definitions okay i make a pause here because i said a lot of things uh, if there is any question i'd like to have it now while i take a glass of water because i need it don't be shy. Please take note of this. Um, web address <clears throat> can you share uh, uh, via yes chat? yes and we're trying to find that okay <laughs> yeah okay so 
in the chat here. The first of the exercise that we will do it will be about this. We'll talk later about this. We'll use it. So if you want in the meantime. Okay, no questions. Either that was perfectly explained or you are all dead. Okay, can you see back the presentation? Yes, perfectly. Okay, so basically the, the urban reconnaissance platform has been the key tool that we have been using for any kind of project. Are we starting a participative process to planning something? Okay, let's start with a reconnaissance process and trying to identify which are the key elements of the topic. Are we doing a work about the heritage of a neighborhood? Let's start a survey using the urban reconnaissance to find the key elements, maybe using the exercise city of memory, which is focused on the city as a stratification of different historical uh, elements, for instance, and so on. Uh, there is almost any kind of element that you can find about this, but it's also a way to facilitate a discussion. So we have a discussion and we go to look for the key definitions that emerge into the discussion and that provides link to connected aspects. Uh, one of the uh, application of this that basically we started uh, a blog you can find it from the website. I'm not going out of the presentation for to show it to you, but you can explore it and find uh, uh, the report of urban exploration, urban reconnaissance uh, exercise that we did in several occasions. By the way, you will find also those that we did for the uh, local lab uh, of uh, Open CCGP. Um, so there are also the contribution of the participants to this lab in the exploration of, of Schoenberg. Um, the UR labs are basically specifically urban reconnaissance laboratories that we do. We did one in the occasion of the uh, uh, collaborative atlases Open CCGP lab in Schoenberg. Then, for instance, there is the secret mission, which is another uh, uh, exercise simplification. So uh, uh, that we used very quickly. I basically extract some specific definitions or questions out of this series of exercise. We prepare it in a in a in a set of uh, uh, questions that are put in a in a in a envelope and given to the participants to the labs. This is very helpful in order both to focus the attention of people. This is a master group of uh, about uh, urban regeneration and social innovation. Master for the uni from the University of Venice. They were with us in Barcelona and we used the second missions. Each one of them received a mission for the exploration inspired by some exercise. This is the one that I provided to a group of civil servants in the Urbact project. So, uh, people that work for uh, local administration, they were visiting a project in Naples uh, uh, and uh, I uh, asked them to identify some specific aspects of those mm. uh, projects that were interesting during the site visit. So asking questions or looking for, uh, and then in the end they were reporting. Each one of them had this secret mission and it was explaining how did they solve their, their, their exercise. This is also a way to, we did it also with, uh, in, 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 with young kids, uh, with the Urbex project, a project about urban exploration. And basically the team of kids were doing a sort of uh, uh, treasure hunt, looking for a certain number of aspects to, to make them curious about the, 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 the neighborhood that they were exploring. Here is, for instance, this is in Palermo, Paola and Giorgio knows very well this. 
they created the second mission for each team and basically the first exploration was done using this this uh, exercises provided in the secret envelope and here they were basically explaining what they found they asked them to look for things like uh, find a place where you can eat a couscous or uh, where you can uh, uh, find uh, political writings or uh, work of art or anything. Basically, it was a gamification process trying to make these youngsters interested in looking at the environment. They were also from other perspective and other point of view. So discovering uh, okay so this is for the urban reconnaissance part i already asked if there are questions if there are more questions you're still in time to stop me otherwise i'll go forward the second aspect is that one of assessment assessment as a I told earlier it's more about uh, considering the information uh, about a situation or a person and making a judgment. Uh, it is the process of considering the amount of value of something or the decision that is made. We use a lot of tools normally for ass assessments. Here I'm skipping this nice game that we designed. Uh, is a memo game with cards on a place so you use it for facilitating uh, pro a game process of starting an assessment it's more a conjunction between the re reconnaissance and the assessment i would say but the most important aspect of assessment is that one of mapping mapping is literally creating visualizations of data creating uh, uh, visualizing relations between the different elements of a landscape, of a context, of a society, of an organization, whatever. So it is extremely important for us also to develop tools for mapping together with people. Because mapping has always been considered a sort of expert knowledge. We always had uh, military institutes or professional geographers or uh, other very technical uh, architects, engineers, very technical expertise in order to create map. But maps are also essential for shape space, for, for redistributing resources. So we, I think it's extremely important to popularize the practice of mapping also with non-expert people. Here, this is a participatory mapping lab that we did with another Erasmus project a few years ago, and basically where we tested the same methods that we applied also in OpenGGGP. And uh, we developed a certain number of specific uh, methodologies, the layers mapping, uh, the thread mapping and the stakeholder mapping are the most used, the most essential for this uh, phase, second phase, in which we need to collect together shareable information, uh, including in the process of data gathering, uh, the larger parts of population as possible. Mapping layers is a simple exercise in which we use transparent maps. Each one is going outside with a specific topic. Here we identified some areas and everybody was selecting a different topic from the urban reconnaissance uh, matrix. So someone was looking for social space, some other ones for bike stalls, other ones were looking for uh, uh, trees, uh, and other ones for language spoken in the corners. And uh, we created a certain number of maps and then back in a very analogical way, we overlapped the maps and we <clears throat> discovered how the different patterns, social, physical, material, political patterns were somehow connected or not. We try to do the same exercise online with the open g uh, laboratory in uh, uh, Schoenberg, but was not so successful, actually. 
I think this phase of connecting together, touching the things, overlapping them, and making uh, uh, reflections together on the pattern that emerges is something that is difficult to, 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 to transfer to the digital dimension. So, again, speeding up because there's a lot to do. Thread mapping is another similar uh, technique which is basically connect through thread the physical map with a certain number of questions and uh, uh, information. So together with uh, we in here we were doing a lab about transformations in the in the in the context of this neighborhood. Uh, people first was asked to provide their definition of transformation. What do we mean by transformation? transformation of uh, uh, green space, uh, the building, uh, the landmarks, but also the property, who owns the economy, uh, public space, uh, the mobility that can transform, uh, the, the connections uh, change, the gentrification, the social profile of the neighborhood can change. So first of all, we identified a certain number of different uh, understanding of transformation and then we provided on the map connection with specific places in which this type of transformation were happening and then we also moved again to the last phase in which we had some uh, characteristics of this so it is a positive transformation neutral ugly bad transformation it is temporary it is permanent so basically this system was able is able to connect together different topics and uh, 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 it's very it's very friendly you can see these people is not skilled mappers it's not it's just people that knows the neighborhood they had ideas and they can visualize very simply connection between ideas between different ways to understand a single uh, uh, specific uh, place uh, connected with the topic we are investigating and but in the end we have uh, collected a certain amount of data of information about uh, uh, the topic and that we can transfer for instance in a, in a map uh, in a way that we don't don't needed these people to learn how to work on a google map on a gis or uh, something else some technical thing okay quick 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 let's move to the last oh, already five o'clock to the last part communication communication is an extremely important uh, part of any process because it's basically how we share information how we organize together uh, there is a lot of uh, essential aspects of communication in all the kind of project that we do transformative process outreach i think is the most critical how do we reach out to the beneficiaries the people that is more in need the people which is in need uh, in, in at risk of exclusion which is an essential key so to adapt to align our communication our language in order to reach out to people that has is less Less focal, it's less uh, connected. Uh, it, it is an essential aspect. But also, we need uh, communication for reporting what we do. Uh, we need to learn to, to tools of, the, uh, of uh, communication for documenting uh, the process, archiving uh, for visualizing ideas. So, co-design labs are basically made on on uh, uh, visualization process that can be. Um, uh, can include people which is not skilled in design are not architect or designers and uh, the last important part is storytelling we are very much focused on storytelling uh, because it's extremely important both as a strategy to bring attention to uh, the issues but also as a way to give voice once again to those uh, uh, social uh, groups that are at uh, risk of exclusion that don't own a strong voice they don't have the means they they, they don't have the the right uh, amplifiers for their voice so basically storytelling is an essential tool that we use for 
uh, empowering uh, local communities and it's part of uh, most of the process that we do. Uh, for this, we developed a, a, a set of story labs. Once again, I have no time really to go through into the methodologies of storytelling that we employed. We developed a certain number of uh, um, um, formats for the kind of storytelling uh, process. For instance, we have stakeholder interviews. You can find on our website, on our Vimeo channel, uh, these uh, different collections. I will add in, into the uh, later into the. Um, I will add now. the link to the collection of different storytellings that we are working on. Uh, I'm back. Where we were. Okay, here. Okay, so you can access, uh, for instance, the video that were made with young kids uh, describing their uh, neighborhood or the um, uh, stakeholder interviews that we did uh, in the um, Meringplatz area, or the urban sketches, which are small kind of video postcards that describe in a short way with simple digital storytelling means atmosphere or reflection or on a place. Once again, I'm not going into this because we don't have the time for all this. It's just that we basically, these three moments that I uh, presented you have been also used Okay, we Mm -hmm. Another thing that we did here is to create a platform for the experimental format of digital storytelling, which is called Narrability. This is basically a quite new product. We are just testing it now. The idea is to collect together interactive storytelling formats. That means that can collect together different formats and languages. Uh, um text sound images video of any so any kind of uh, uh attempt of digital storytelling that we create can be connected here and we created a certain number of collections which are related with the project that we are doing and by the way for instance here we have the one that we opened up for the lab uh, of uh, open cccp that we did in schoneberg and uh, just to take some breaths, I will show you one of the products of this laboratory. It's the short storytelling created by Emma, one of our uh, participants. The, the project in Schoneberg was about heritage and the commons. So basically, we, uh, she made a little research about an historical episode of uh, <clears throat> She found a key in telling the story from the perspective of an imaginary per person telling the story. And yeah, you can find here pieces of video, but I'm afraid we cannot hear the sound. Oh, yeah. Can you hear the sound? Uh, no. Are you using headphones? No. I no. I think no. the problem, I don't know, is playing at the same time. I'm not sure. Anyway, you can go and check the website. Okay, don't worry. Okay. Okay, we are going to stop.
I need to stop it, sorry, because you don't hear it, but I am. I don't know, where is it? Okay, here we are, stop. Okay. Any questions so far? Uh, I'm still sharing the screen. Yes. Okay. I don't know why it went back. So finally, we have also the neighborhood Atlas platform. I'm not talking about this. We have no time. I want to do something with you. But there's all tools that we uh, tested in the collaborative Atlas for Heritage and the Common Program, in which we basically used the three moments that I presented to you with a laboratory of urban reconnaissance in which we explored uh, the reality of a neighborhood of Berlin, Schoneberg, it was quite new for everybody, is where we have our new office. So we uh, engaged together with the participants of the lab in exploring uh, the milieu around our new office. Uh, using the urban reconnaissance. As I said, you, you can find on the urban reconnaissance blog also the uh, results of the exploration that were did by the participants. And then there was a second collaborative mapping lab in which we tried to use digitally the, the, the uh, methodologies of uh, thread mapping and layers mapping with results a little bit less easy and brilliant uh, then and finally we did a, a workshop of uh, digital storytelling using uh, uh, the methodology of scripting which i haven't presented you but basically the result was this kind of uh, stories that i sh just showed you uh, we are just now in the process of uploading the first stories so we are testing the platform this is every, everything very much in progress in terms of results how it worked, but I was very happy also the fact that somehow we used our laboratory to experiment a lot of new things. So the people participating with the, 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 this lab was also essential in uh, uh, supporting the, the innovation, the, 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 the testing of uh, new tools, uh, which are still in, in, uh, in progress. We, there is a lot that we need to develop and to uh, uh, in order to um, uh, like finalize these tools, uh, narrability is quite new, it's basically not officially presented, it's online because we are testing it, but we haven't presented it. The idea is that the collection will be open also to other projects and other people that wants to uh, collect their storytelling uh, uh, projects uh, in a way that they are all pulled together in a set of stories coming from different neighborhoods. Together, these stories can be published on the neighborhood atlas that I haven't presented you, but there's another digital platform collecting together big data set of uh, uh, about uh, local neighborhoods, and those things can help support local processes of uh, um, any kind, maybe a campaign for uh, struggling against a project or a visioning project for designing a new alternative visions or uh, community building, uh, pooling together uh, resources. Uh, the Atlas is the dimension that we are exploring in our project. Uh, but we use those tools basically for testing their use in the frame of uh, a local laboratory. Now, if there is no question so far, I would like to move on and using this last, whoa, 40 minutes only, 45 minutes, 
for uh, making a few exercise uh, with you. So there are two exercises for drafting a local laboratory. The first exercise will use the urban reconnaissance to focus on one thematic focus. This will be an individual exercise for each of you. So you will have 10 minutes to go around into the uh, uh, urban reconnaissance platform and find the definition and the exercise that you find more useful for the idea that you want to develop. The second will use the framework for transformation to brainstorm the structuring of these projects. I was thinking to do it in uh, breaking rooms in couples, but I think that we don't have to time, the time to go in breaking rooms, come back. So I will just suggest that we go quick this exercise together in couple with me. So I will be your spar sparring uh, partner asking you some questions about the, uh, your specific context. So to do the first exercise, I just ask you to think of one context, one neighborhood, one theme that you would like to work on. This may be the area where you have already applied your interest your analysis with the local labs, if you participated to the local labs. This may be, in, in the case of Spain, maybe an exercise regarding the area that you want to use for doing your future lab, but can be also a neighborhood that you have been working on by personally by yourself, your place where you live in and you are interested in and may even not be a theme, a, a place, but a theme, more kind of a social project is not strictly bounded, but it's more defined by, for instance, an, a social group. I want to work with, uh, I don't know, youngsters at risk of exclusion at city level somehow and so how can i use this <clears throat> so how do you do this exercise first of all we will turn on cameras on this and take 10 minutes each one of the participants for going to the link that you find into the chat. Think of your application area or context and looking for the definition and the exercise that is more fitting to your project. Imagine that you are going to develop a specific local urban transformative process connect yourself with what you do usually with what you want to do the kind of work that you uh, are used to do and try to identify the area or the theme that is more close to what actually you are already thinking and working on and try to use this uh, urban reconnaissance platform to identify a key definition and an exercise that may help you to kick off a laboratory. And then in 10 minutes, you come back and you're going to explain me how you would uh, like to use it. And obviously, their exercise would be also that one in, uh, let's say, three minutes to give me also your idea for this laboratory. What will be the uh, a key uh, objective, what will be the, the, especially the context, because then we are going to use, to move to the second exercise, the one, the frame for transformation using the framework uh, of, uh, of fields, uh, uh, variables and moments in order to define a little bit better your idea. 
But again, to recap, I want you to come out with an idea for a local laboratory. Defining one place of application, one context of application, and first of all, dedicate 10 minutes in exploring the urban reconnaissance platform for defining, uh, let's say, a kickoff activity. How will you use it in kicking off your lab? Is it clear? Yes. We use the, um, uh, the urban uh, reconnaissance platform. Maybe you have to relink uh, the website. So. Yeah, I think I, uh, it, it is already in, but I post again the link uh, maybe in the chat. Probably so those that arrived later. Yeah. Meanwhile, No, sorry, sorry, wrong link. What is happening here? It's showing me urban reconnaissance and it... Uh, wait, I can, I can do it maybe. Um, uh, ah, okay, yeah. Something strange in my browser, but it's fine. Okay, just a moment. But we already have it also yes. in the chat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. You have two times now. <laughs> okay. Meanwhile, any question to this? Need to recapitulate? Good. Choice a place, choose a place, choose an idea for a lab and try to use the uh, uh, urban reconnaissance platform to identify the key words, the key theme, as, uh, and an exercise to kick off a laboratory. And then in 10 minutes at, let's say, 5.30, Five, we are back, and then we will use. We will do while you present your ideas. We will use the second exercise together. Five minutes each. I'm closing my camera. If you need me, you just talk or send. Uh, A message in the chat. See you then.
Okay, are you ready? Not yet, if I can have a couple of minutes more. No problem. I need like a couple of days to go through the <laughs> <or whatever. laughs> <Reconnaissance> platform. <laughs> so I have a couple of ideas, but probably I need, yeah, much more time to go through all of it. The purpose was just to get you trapped in it. <laughs> and you have all the time to, you to got play it. with it. <laughs> you got me but trapped. That, uh, <laughs> anyway, anyway, I think I, 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 it's nice just to start to discuss some ideas we have mm -hmm. half an hour. So let, let's see what we can do. OK, great. Who's talking? Hmm. I can share my ideas if Anybody? Yes, please. Uh, okay. First of all, who is speaking? Because uh, I don't Mariano. see you. Sorry, I'm opening oh, okay. my camera. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, my my first idea is to to like a, um, like a physical space. I would like to work around the in the neighborhood around uh, the Convent de San Agustí, which is where we usually work with Oscar um, in the city center of Barcelona. Uh, and I think it's interesting because it's a quite um, touristic uh, place, or it was a quite touristic place. So it's a mixture of, um, uh, of uh, let's say, natives and, uh, and uh, you know, temporary population and tourists and uh, students and those kind of, of, of inhabitants and I think I would like to work uh, with uh, with uh, with the elder people living there and I would like to um, and I would like to map or to identify uh, because it, it is a neighborhood that of course, after the COVID, it has changed. Lots of things have closed. Uh, less people is living there. Less uh, tourists are going passing through. But the other people are still living there. So I would like to know which kind of needs do they, uh, new needs do they identify. So I was wondering, um, uh, I was thinking like in two layers. One is like, trying to, to map um, regarding services and uh, stores and those kind of things, uh, what is still there and what is, has disappeared, let's mm -hmm. say pre and post COVID. Um, try to identify if there are like categories of things that have disappeared or, or closed or, and, and to see which kind of needs does do appear for these elder people that continue living there, have to be isolated, and um, and uh, yeah, well, and from there, what can we do? Let's say let's firstly map, and then and then uh, try to I don't know it, propose. But. Uh, but did you identify some specific I was, to I was, yeah, 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 I was, 
I don't know which one was it, but uh, I started with the one that was like a, like a, the tour through a neighborhood, like identifying. Uh, oh, sorry, I, I I didn't write down the the names, mm -hmm. uh, but but to to there was mm -hmm. one that was like uh, observing the the kind of people that move through the kind of uh, the the the, the well, trying to identify if they're tourists or not. Uh, okay, think. so um, so probably it's uh, in inhabited city, which is yeah. the basic element about the community of people. Yeah, uh, probably that one, and yes. then, and then probably the one regarding the, the segmented uh, city. I think, but I'm not sure. Okay. Segmented city, which is this is but more it's, physical. It's, this is more about the morphological dimension spaces. I think it could be interested uh, interesting with the 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 um, um, what you presented, what you talked about, also the neglected aspect, so the the degradation of the city. Mm -hmm. In this case, we have this very quick uh, agent, the, the the COVID, that created a crisis, but basically working on what remain, which shops closed, and which are uh, uh, still existing. Uh, it's uh, 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 an aspect of mapping, important aspect of mapping. So creating a map of what has been disappearing or closing down because of this crisis. On the other hand, uh, there is the, also this capacity of uh, supporting uh, itself of people, so the welfare city one, yeah. with the idea of uh, mapping uh, solidarity and uh, organizations that... Um... Okay, <clears throat> I'd like to move just a moment on... Um, on the um, presentation here, you're seeing this now. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, this slide. So just to to have a quick look at the second exercise. So let's let's try to do a couple of exercises here. And then you are free to work by yourself on on it in, in the future. So, in your opinion, which is the starting field for your project? Are you starting from the specific special dimension, from the social dimension, or for a strategic point of view because you have a plan, a project, or from the practices, which is which will be the starting uh, field of um, application of your project? Good question. Uh, I don't know, probably if I, if, um, probably practices because uh, of course I do have the, uh, it is a concrete place, it is a concrete, let's say, segment of people, but what I'm interested in, in, in knowing is the practices and the, and the needs that might appear, so it probably would be the practices. Mm -hmm. And what is the key variables from which you should start in your context? Um, mm, 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 my expectations, probably. Mm -hmm. Expectations. Expectations of whom? Because of, did of you them. think about who will be the beneficiary of your work? Of, your uh, of them, work? because if you work with other people and you try to map their needs and what they, uh, they would probably, uh, you would probably raise expectations regarding some, um, uh, results on that. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that the key part here is is um, equalizing those expectations between what we're going to work with and the possibilities of solutions for their needs. Hmm. 
but that I'm improvising, so <laughs> I'll probably have to think about it. But no, no, but uh, exactly. But the, the idea is that this is exactly a, a kind of, of framework that is used in order to think about the project. So the, the objective and the expectations that you are you are creating about it, it's, it's a key aspect. What are you doing this for? Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm, I'm trying also to move a little bit forward from mm -hmm. simply discussing the laboratory that we need to do because there is the open GTGP project that needs to have mm. done. Um, more in general, in thinking about, I am working on a project which has some kind of specific local application. It's quite important to understand which are the key fields, variables, and moments where you start mm -hmm. from. I think also the moment is very important. In which kind of condition you start your work? Uh, have, mm -hmm. Which moment is the one that is starting your project? The, the reconnaissance. First. I think the reconnaissance one. Mm, yeah, yeah, I th yeah. I would say it's it's. Yeah. Why are uh, you choosing Saint Augustine? Um, because it's. Uh, because because it's known and unknown because i think it's quite affected because of the covid mm -hmm. i mean it's one of the it's not like a very um uh well, as i said it's very touristic so as there's no tourism right now um it's been an evident change let's say Mm -hmm. And uh, also because there is a small but existing um, elder community that uh, needs attention, I think. And as, as it's not, you know, the main um, objective of the city hall in that area, it's a bit mm -hmm. neglected. That's a personal feeling, but but I, I need Oscar saying I, I I like Oscar doing this because he's the one that works <laughs> nearby, so he knows better. Okay, but definitely I will move on because otherwise we don't have the time to hear okay. from other places. So definitely, I. I would be also happy to discuss with each one of you if you have some practical idea to going on to, to this. But now maybe let's try to change it uh, a, a little bit the focus. So maybe maybe it would be interesting to have someone for either from uh, London or from uh, Romania now, because Pipke and Franci they have already been immersed in this. So we may also go on discussing ideas. But as we have, let's say, 20 minutes, I would like to hear from some place that I don't know. Come on, Romania. Alex. <laughs> OK. Um, I was looking at two. Um, I was, I'm trying to choose between two options, the disadvantaged city or the welfare city. Uh, and I think I'm going to stick with welfare city um, because it, it has to do with, I, I'm thinking of a group of people that we work with and that group of people is people who have to go and work abroad in order to provide for their children and families left behind or people who do that and then return to the community of origin and they don't find that community as it was before so uh we have um uh, on the one hand going through the description of the welfare city uh you have people who don't find mm -hmm. uh resources or don't find their uh dreams coming through come true uh, based on uh, what their city offers, and not just the city, but the country, but specifically in their city, they cannot achieve their dreams. They cannot achieve their dreams for their children. They don't 
uh, get maybe the education that they want for their children. They don't have certain uh, services like medical services in their city or living conditions. So they want more, so they have to go abroad. So that's one level of analysis, you know, what it is that the city can do to keep their inhabitants inhabitants from leaving, from leaving. Um, and I was going through the, uh, you know, if the description again, um, and I would try, and I and I try to kind of, while I was trying to put myself in the shoes of a person that leaves right, to work abroad, and I'm thinking what it is that I find in the city that keeps me in the city. Why you know, why am I not leaving the city myself? <laughs> uh, question: Are you? Thinking of the full city dimension, you're not working on specifically uh, local no, level. No, no, I'm okay. thinking of the full city. Yeah, uh, and I was. This is actually how we 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 started working in our uh, local labs. We mm -hmm. started from the general, you know, describing. Uh, I had had the participants um, think of a community that community that are most fam. Uh, uh, familiar with and look at the things that the com community has to offer in terms of services, in terms of the things that are important for vulnerable people, what it is that vulnerable, vulnerable people cannot find in their community, or what it is that they can find that we can bring to the table to meet the needs of vulnerable people. Okay, so just to say the starting field for you was definitely people. It was vulnerable people, yeah. Yeah, okay. So you started from people. Yeah. Then did you set objectives in your lab? Um, well, our objective was um, to come up with a plan to solve needs of specific vulnerable people that we would identify during the local labs um, and to come up with a plan that is applicable tomorrow with a specific community that would also uh, uh, identified during the local labs. So we we started from broad, learning about vulnerable people, learning about uh, how to solve the needs of vulnerable people, and then we would go to, we separated participants into three teams, and each team would select a specific community, a specific vulnerable group, and then the, 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 the goal was to have a, a, a plan that it could actually, it could actually uh, implement tomorrow. Okay, and which is the key variable that you basically can identify as? Hmm. Yes. Uh, uh, probably uh, time, because we wanted to have something that can be done starting tomorrow. I mean, a little bit of everything, uh, probably. That makes sense. Uh, li listening from you, probably procedures, because you were looking for creating a plan, and the plan is yeah. Is this I, I was procedure. yeah. Anyway. I was I was select, uh, thinking of either of the two, yeah. procedures or time. Mm -hmm. Well, procedures plus time, it's is the definition of a plan. I would say. <laughs> oh, yeah. mm -hmm. okay. Good. And what's the moment you started from? Reconnaissance. Definitely. Okay. Yeah, we we started from very broad. We wanted to um, get relevant information from the broad spectrum, but each team had to go to research the specific community and look for things that are missing and resources. So we started with reconnaissance. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, can we get to some more? Do we have anyone from London? No, we we are <laughs> we are without uh, our trainee, just me and George. And okay. But if we have to also as well uh, 
choose one. We were thinking about uh, also inspired by this morning that we were uh, so we we were analyzing places in the neighborhood uh, uh, that could be used. Uh, from the local uh, from the local residents, and uh, I think uh, one category for us will be for sure neglected city. So, um, uh, in the sense that uh, there are there is uh, um, there are many many different uh, buildings and uh, public spaces, public and private spaces that are just uh, abandoned without um, any any specific uh, view of uh, the the possible use of these spaces so um, it's it's a bit of contrast because uh, we were actually looking at the place in which we can uh, um, realize uh, um, some public activities with uh, different residents and uh, so it's like there are no places in fact for this purpose but there are um, many different uh, places that are just uh, uh, abandoned and it's like they just uh, wait uh, i don't know for what for the day you did your laboratory yes yeah we have done not uh, uh, on um, yeah, not on this uh, aspect. In our lab, we focus uh, um, more on the multicultural, uh, the, the multi-religious aspect of the neighborhood. So mm. the presence of um, yeah different cults and uh, uh, places specific for these cults, and also in this view of um, let's say different stratification that, uh, uh, regard this uh, specific specific places so for example there is uh, a very interesting place is a uh, mosque that is that mm. was before a christian church um or so the different use so how the also religious places are used by by, by the yeah the the local uh, population and uh, somehow this group found because in capo the neighborhood in which we work is very religious let's mostly of mm -hmm. course uh, uh, so it's full of uh, uh, cults it's full of uh, uh, um, companies religious companies that are taking care of the place and of the different churches so they also have a kind of uh, economic or social control of the territory so it's very interesting how religious could be like a way of uh, analyzing the neighborhood and uh, the group uh, but the group focuses not only in the most obvious so the catholic one but also in uh, all the other uh, um, aspects so that's very that's interesting very... there is that's also actually... No, I was saying that just is, is one of those exercises that we wrote, but we really never used in labs in uh, actually. And I think that would be definitely very interesting to do a workshop focusing on specific these aspects. Capo would be a perfect place to test it. Yeah, this mosque is, uh, <laughs> is a very interesting yeah. uh, example Not of... But not only, you see also the aspect how, for instance, is uh, replicated also in the street art. No, yeah. the most yeah, famous street also, artist of Capo is one that used always these sacred topics, <laughs> no? and somehow mix it up with some kind of pop uh, imagination. So you find a lot of... Uh, yeah, there is connect. also a very... You, you will see a picture in our presentation, but it's... Uh, it's like uh, you know Madonna, but there is uh, mixed with an Indian uh, divinity. So there is a lot. This this represent what we are talking about. So religious as a as a linking aspect, as a as a link uh, the population uh, in the neighborhood. And another aspect, I don't know if there is. Um, um, a category. For it, it was uh, the um, toponymies. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, City of Names. City of Names. Okay, so the, um, that's also a very interesting uh, aspect because, uh, yeah, they were analyzing uh, names of the, of the streets and the different use. I think already a bit mentioned uh, mm -hmm. this part of, uh, of our lab. Yeah, the nomenclature of places and uh, very interesting, uh, I mean, not just historical, that's again interesting to discover how for example um, yeah where was uh, a meal or where was a river passing through so that gave name to many different places we discover how a market uh, for uh, the meat market uh, moved from uh, a neighborhood of palermo bucheria that take his name from uh, bucheri so from uh, meat market meat uh, market it huh. um, so it crossed the street it, it was moved in capo so and from then you can see because there is uh, a part specific of capo full of uh, street names uh, with uh, animals mm -hmm. so discesa delle capre dei giovenchi and so on so a lot of streets named with uh, animals um, okay. and another aspect was uh, how these uh, uh, yeah how they also the name of the places change uh, nowadays uh, uh, as uh, initiatives from the residents. So one example is a man that uh, named this a square with his own name because he's cleaning the square. So that's also mm -hmm. another another story, another part of the stratification of the names uh, of the city of names. Mm -hmm. So it definitely looks like your laboratory starts from a place dimension because the definition of the, the place is this one that creates then uh, uh, most of the discussion of the work of, uh, of the laboratory. In terms of variables, looks like you're working on uh, language and procedures very much. What, what would be the, the, the key language, in your opinion, here in, in the lab that you're, that you're planning? Let's say, let's think of the lab that you're planning. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we are really running out of time, but would like to, to, to listen from someone else, actually, here. Is there a last... Uh, voice that we can hear from another place. I can uh, quickly say something, Lorenzo. Yes, please. Because um, I'm the uh, sole representative of London, not even being in London at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. I uh, start to become quite familiar with the exercise. And mm -hmm. what I did was I looked at the um, work we're doing here in Brussels around electricity. I think I mentioned it to you yep. before because it yep. seems such a, a blatant entrance, such so uh, obvious, mm -hmm. that it led me to City of Infrastructure. Ah, Infrastructure. Um, and it, it's actually quite apt, because it, it um, from, from there you could um, uh, jump directly to City of Flows, mm -hmm. and uh, the Energy City. The energy city. Mm -hmm. I, I very much like the interconnection, and because it, it revealed in a way the reason why we chose that topic, that is, the, um, interconnects with these three very, very important things. Um, so, if you uh, look in more detail at City of Infrastructure, it describes sort of an approach which we weren't that far off, I think. Um, we did an, um, a mapping exercise. <laughs> um, uh, you mean the exercise? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, where, um, to briefly explain the idea then, was we took maps of the neighborhood mm -hmm. and through uh, exploration, what you would refer to as reconnaissance, mm -hmm. we discovered that a neighborhood is all actually chopped up in smaller bits uh, called uh, houses of about 200 households being connected to one low voltage cabin which is a very interesting new new geography that imposes itself on that city. Um, it's an infrastructure. Mm -hmm. It also becomes a city of flow in the sense that um, 
it's a way by the energy distributor to organize its distribution but at the same time if you look at it from our perspective let's say it's also a way to organize solidarity in an approachable way um, mm -hmm. because uh, without becoming too technical it's much easier to share the energy surplus energy your sol solar panels create behind such a low voltage cabin than above so in our workshop we took that level um, imposed that level on the neighborhood and from there on started imposing other levels um, mm -hmm. which in the end uh, we made it sort of a, a sum or a best of analysis of that and resulted in a, a heat map You're probably familiar with heat maps from football like where was the yeah. one team or the other more mm -hmm. active but we reappropriated that and we said which part of the neighborhood has the most um, combination of um, social activity, potential uh, active residents, at the same time, how if you cluster them with those, with the infrastructure, with those low voltage cabins, which points come out the reddest, the hottest? And in a neighborhood of about 6,000, three spots came out. So, is there enough public space to create meeting and engagement? And that's where we're working now. Uh, mm -hmm. In one of those three spots, we actually started, and we we did we made this heat map with a lot of residents, like three four workshops. But I just told you that to illustrate from infrastructure on the exercise, going through the workshops, ending up with mm -hmm. um, where we are now. Um, we could look if you want. We could look at the uh, other slide in your presentation to see. Yeah. Yep. Which, sure. sure. Uh, just just I wanted to signal another exercise connected, which I think it's quite interesting also. With this, while you, you were talking, I think that also the uh, order in the city uh, has a lot of rela uh, relation with it because it's about how, for instance, this infrastructure are ca uh, cataloged, uh, mm -hmm. uh, or identified, uh, classified. For Brilliant. instance, let's think about all of the. The, the mobile cell phones, for instance, that you can really map going around the city and looking where your cell phone is uh, uh, hitting a different uh, cell, uh, uh, which has a different code. Uh, each one of those elements uh, includes some kind of coding in order to connect themselves and be part of, of, of a grid, of a network. So there is also this this uh, aspect of uh, generating orders, numbers, codes, which is uh, mm -hmm. that brings you to the cyber city dimension, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, yeah, you. the other right. slide. Um, it's from you were just saying about ordered city that it, mm -hmm. um, the reason why it's so interesting now to work on on. Uh, electricity in particular is that the order is shifting very much um, mm -hmm. the um, traditional way of organizing through large conglomerates of international companies is not working anymore they're too slow to deal with the tiny grid of one house one solar panel um, mm -hmm. the intermediate distribution companies have a very hard time working in in two directions it used to be easy to get electricity give it to people and then if that's too much you just put it into the electricity is coming back from that consumer, um, which, which means that they have to become an active player in the in the in the new order, let's say. Um, so, in your four fields, uh, first and foremost about people, but it's also about practices, proposing an alternative practice to an energy market, which is very very interesting. Um, don't have objectives would come in in the sense that um, we did not set ourselves that objective at the time emerging from the changing uh, legal framework um, residents or end users they're called are entitled to organize themselves in communities who would share produce together and it back grid so that has become an objective over time to make such a an energy community of a social housing estate be their own small energy mm. uh, producer in a sense so I'm shifting between those two but then I always forget to mention in place and that's ultimately a core in our work I mean that's what always mm. brings us together so 
Mm -hmm. I take it so much for granted that I forget to mm -hmm. emphasize Obviously. it. In, in most of the case, all those fields are connected. They are, they, 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 you cannot, uh, it's just here about identifying which is the key entry point, you know. If you mm. had a strategy that was that one of empowering people, getting them able to mm. produce the, and share their energy, in a way, it's about objective. It's a, it's a lot mm. that had a strategic uh, dimension, but it's also true that it's strongly based on practices, on the possibility that you use certain knowledge in order to transform uh, the, 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 the way as electricity is distributed to so yeah quite See, it's, <laughs> it's good it's a good correction to say prioritize yeah, um, exactly. because it's it's not about picking one it's it's more about making a spider diagram with a exactly. every with four axes and everybody has its own mm -hmm. awkward figure you see yeah it's always a matter of thinking where do i start from I'm starting yep. from a place because I work on a, on a neighborhood. I'm starting from people because I'm working on a, on a specific social group or class or on objective uh, because I have a specific strategy or on practice because I have a specific knowledge or capacity. But then, obviously, the, all the other three are always, uh, more or less always involved in, in any kind of transformative process that we can think otherwise it's interesting to put them like that people yeah. places objective practices like where mm. where on the scale am i more yeah interesting yeah. It's, it's it's more about it's not much to dividing in in four categories but rather to understanding where i start from mm -hmm. or to tackling the complexity and the same mm. also for the variables yep yeah yeah, yeah. I'm struggling more there, mm -hmm. um, because on a, on a on a on one level, um, part of the exercise is developing a new language that can be shared by large producer as by end users. That requires mm -hmm. procedures, requires managing expectations, and requires time. So, yeah. <laughs> but, but once again, what was your key problem? Uh, are you were you were you basically proposing a project and so you are setting expectations to the communities or you're studying if you're doing a study a scientific study you're studying the let's say the technological problem so you are looking for the right procedures to do something mm -hmm. but if you are politically acting in terms of proposing an idea so you start from the language uh, so, and yeah. it, it's my idea, which is some stuff technical, which a lot of people will take some time to understand what I'm talking about, electrical grid, this kind of things. So probably the first step to be start from the language that they use to propose the idea. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. I think that sums it up. Uh, it's a conclusion we often come to that it takes the language before you can start. Also in the eight moments, um, mm -hmm. we discussed this before in this mm -hmm. project as well, that we also have this eight steps in many projects and the names are even quite close but before you can start visioning or designing you need this shared language exactly so yeah. even before cooperation uh, communication mm -hmm. reconnaissance and assessment are a bit uh, yeah. overlapping i think yeah yeah definitely we're, we're there somewhere I, I see the reconnaissance as a practice of, of language aligning mostly as you see yeah. we, are, we are using a glossary and a, a hypertextual glossary in order to define the words we are using, which is basically goes in parallel with the process of exploring the space. It's also looking for the word that I need to describe the space. Brilliant. Mm. Yeah, mm. it's all about basically uh, uh, finding the right way to disentangling the complexity of process. Process working on complex mm. processes and we need to disentangle this complexity so mm. we need these key elements to to dominate this complexity that's a just little games in order to facilitate the reflection about this brilliant thanks very helpful sorry i hope this has been helpful i think it's, it's just what i said yeah very helpful <laughs> thank you very much mm. Uh, there is any other um, final comment, someone that wants to intervene? I oh, know it's late. 
I can tell to Francie and, and VPK that we can have an internal discussion about this next. If you agree, I'm curious about what you were talking about, thinking about. Yeah, sure. I mean, mm -hmm. it's also time. Yeah. Just, just, just for curiosity, what was your uh, focus? Uh, my US? idea was the disadvantaged city. So coming from mm -hmm. more like wider idea of disadvantage and then coming to like specific groups getting disadvantaged for example like uh, homeless people so working more on the topic of this and less on the like a specific place but maybe it could be also nice to compare it like with different districts in the same city and maybe compare with uh, with an area where homelessness is more visible another one where it's less and then compare if the like um, the disadvantage or maybe also the behavior of the other people are changing. Um, yeah, in this direction. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you, Vibke? Um, I was actually thinking about going to the same area that we explored already once um, in the workshop and then maybe even choosing the same topics I was thinking about the city of commons where people were exploring what is what has been done in the um, in the in the keep in the neighborhood for solidarity and I was wondering maybe now what is done now that everything is closed and that people are keeping like distance to each other how what um, like how are the commons now what what common gathering points are there now yeah, maybe something like this. Yeah, that's quite interesting, definitely. Uh, thinking about the concept of commons in times of COVID, it's mm. quite challenging, definitely. Okay, well, I think it's time to close, but you know that you are all in contact with me, so any Thank you. Um, think it may be helpful in terms of further developing these tools, applying to the projects uh, you're doing, and also to the rest, to the continuation of the lab. I don't know what, how, how Giorgio and uh, Paul are thinking to manage the next step. But if you're thinking about local plans, it would be interesting to 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 think of uh, already the the. the the kind of reflections that were coming from this first uh, very short exercise and how they can be applied in an action plan. Yeah, definitely. It should be, we can try us also at last exercise of the next section to, mm -hmm. because we have an approach on local action plan that, yeah, it could be combined. Of course, we can, can continue next time after the presentation we have made. Okay. We want to do. Okay, thank you very much, Lauren. So it was super inspiring and um, super interesting also to open this, you know, ways of approaching topics. Um, as usual, questions are open to Lorenzo, to us, to whoever you need to contact. You have all our emails, so uh, please feel free to to ask and to continue <coughs> developing your ideas and uh, see you all on Thursday. We're supposed to finish this week the the training. So Thursday, four o'clock, same link. Thank you very much. To bye all. bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Ciao. Bye. Bye.